Hi everybody, it's Webby again. Today's video, we're going to be having a look at the brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla Cross. There's three trim levels that you can get in this new model, GX, GXL and Atmos, and they're all available in either petrol or hybrid versions. In this video, we're going to be concentrating on the mid-range GXL and with a two-wheel drive hybrid system. Pricing starts from $33,000 plus on roads and goes all the way up to $49,000 plus on roads as there's a big board of uh, sort of price changes there um, and as you can say this GXL two-wheel drive hybrid sits bang in the middle. I'll put all the pricing on the screen for you so you can see all the different models and drivetrains um, to decide which one's going to be best for you. In this video we're going to have a look around the outside of the car, look at some of the inside features and then obviously take it for a drive. At the end I'll give you my opinion and thoughts on this car. Um, it's going to be a big hit, it's a Toyota, it's a hybrid. Um, so yeah, and no doubt it's probably got a long waiting list already as we speak. Um, because everything else does at the minute, particularly if you want a hybrid. But anyway, let's get stuck into having a look around this car and starting from the outside. So starting at the front, I quite like the styling of this. It looks like a baby Kluger with that sort of, yeah, with that front grille. Um, you can notice a hybrid because it's got the blue Toyota badge uh, on the front there. Um, but I actually think it's a really good looking car. I like the sort of the curved approach of this rather than the sort of more angular approach of the RAV4. Um, that's very kind of like, yeah, sort of very angular and yeah, lines and everything. But this is a bit more rounded, uh, which I do prefer. Um, there's quite a good choice of colours to choose from. Um, this blue is quite nice as well. I'll put all the colours on the screen for you so you can see uh, what's available. Now I said at the beginning there's two engine options. You can either have just a straight two litre petrol um, or you can have this hybrid system. The hybrid consists of the two litre petrol plus an electric motor. The standard two litre petrol engine will give you 126 kilowatt, where this hybrid gives you 146 kilowatt. Um, plus obviously you get better fuel economy, a bit quicker off the lights, that type of thing. Um, so as ever, with any Toyota, the hybrid is going to be the one to have. Um, downside of that, you have to wait a long time to get one. Now, although the fuel consumption is particularly good for a car this size, it needs to be because the fuel tank is really, really small. On this two-wheel drive hybrid version, you've only got a 36 litre fuel tank. So it's just as well, it does 4.3 litres per 100 k's because you'd forever be stopping at the fuel station otherwise. So being that this is the GXL version, we do get a few more goodies over and above the base model. Um, so other than the front parking sensors, we've also got the panoramic cameras as well. So you've got 360 cameras. Um, that's also quite handy when you're parking as well, which is quite good. Um, LED headlights, and you've also got the sequential indicators, which strobe um, when you turn left or right, put your hazards on. Uh, that's quite cool. I do like that as a feature. Now, coming around to the side of this Corolla Cross, I actually think the side profile is actually quite good looking. It does resemble a baby Kluger again, so it's very much just been shrunk in the wash, basically. Um, you get these sort of plastic wheel arches, and then all the plastic trims down the bottoms of the doors, which gives it sort of like a, a fake off-road look, if you like. Alloy wheels are 17 inch on this model, which in these days is considered quite small, but it's not the sort of car it's designed for going around corners quickly. It's more about comfort, and the sort of people that buy this car want comfort, basically. Um, so 17 inch with a decent set of tires is actually perfect. You can also spot that this is the GXL because you've got the chrome strip going across the top of the window, uh, which goes all the way down to the back, and then you've got Corolla Cross written uh, in the chrome trim on the rear quarter panel. So coming around to the back of the Corolla Cross then, um, the design itself I actually think is quite nice. There's not too many sharp and angular lines like you get on something like a CHI. It's very traditional. Now, uh, if we open up the boot, on this two-wheel drive GXL hybrid version, boot size is 425 litres. Now, depending on what model you buy, it's just to how much boot space you get. So I'll put on screen the different boot capacities, because every model is pretty much different. Um, so yeah, that information on screen will actually help you decide which one is going to be best for you in terms of giving you maximum boot space. So there you can see how much space the are come out with seats down. But what you can also notice, and I'll come from the rear door, is there's actually quite a step here. There's a good, probably sort of five or six inches there from the actual boot floor up to where the seats fold down. So if you've got something 
a long object, that's probably going to get in the way. Um, it's a shame that it's not kind of one level, because um, if you've got something sort of fragile, you're not really going to be able to put that in there. Um, so a little bit disappointing. However, you do get all this usable space. So that's a bit of a look around the outside and also the big capacity. Next, we're going to jump inside the car, have a look at the interior and also some of the main features. If you are enjoying the video, don't forget to give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out the next time I upload a new video. So with that said and done, let's have a look inside this new Toyota Corolla Cross. Okay, so let's jump inside then. Keyless entry is standard, as you'd expect, uh, along with push button start. Uh, so there's the interior. So a very typical Toyota. Not too many buttons everywhere, uh, but everything sort of does its job. And I have to say, I'm a fan of these seats. They're really nice and comfortable. Plenty of sort of bolstering down here on the sides and also a bit of leg support there. Uh, just a little headrest as well, which is quite nice. Uh, the GXL, we've got manual seats. Uh, so we've got backrest adjustment. We've got height adjuster. Uh, and also we've got lumbar support there. So back, back. Just down here to the right of the steering wheel, we've got a couple of buttons as well. Uh, so you can choose which camera you want to view if, you are, if you're reversing or going forward. Uh, you've got automatic high beam for your headlights, and then you've got headlight level adjustment there. Uh, so if you put a load of stuff in your boot and it weighs the back of the boot down, uh, that will stop you blinding people coming the opposite way. Uh, incidentally, bonnet release is also there. We've got an airbag there as well, which is good to see. So in event of an accident, your knees aren't going to get crushed. So let's jump inside and have a sit in and see what the driver's views are like. So this is the view from the driver's seat then. Uh, we've got a nice leather wrapped steering wheel in front of us here on this GXL model. Uh, the normal buttons on the steering wheel to operate the display in front of the driver. Uh, and then things like your adaptive cruise control and lane keeping aid on that side. Uh, let's just bring it into life so I can show you the display there. So we push the brake pedal just to bring it fully into life. So let's zoom in a little bit on that so you can see it a little bit better. So that's your display here on this hybrid version. As you can see, it's like pretty much any other Toyota in what information it gives you. Um, so right around that middle dial, you can see whether you're using or putting power back into the battery. Uh, over on the far right, we've got the fuel gauge for the petrol side of things. Uh, and then the dead center, uh, you've got your trip computer to tell you uh, what your fuel consumption is like. Uh, as you can see, I've been averaging 5.5 liters per hundred since I picked this car up yesterday. Um, so yeah, not too bad actually, not too far away from uh, from what Toyota are claiming for the system. So then from the digital instrument cluster, we then come across to the infotainment display there on the top of the dash. Now this is a 10.5 inch screen on this GXL model. Um, if you get the GX model, it's an 8 inch screen, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, you also don't get the built-in sat-nav on the GX model. Uh, so this GXO and the Atmos, you've got built-in sat-nav. We've also got wireless Apple CarPlay. Um, if you want Android Auto, you do have to plug it in via a cable. Uh, the only downside to the wireless Apple CarPlay, particularly in this GXL model, is you don't get a wireless phone charger, um, which surprises me a little bit, because it's like, surely that's the obvious thing to pair it with. Um, but anyway, you don't get one. Um, not much you can do about that. But either way, the screen itself is a big improvement over what Toyota have had in the past because, let's face it, Toyota are never up to date with the latest in technology, are they? Um, so this new system is actually a bit of a departure from the norm for them. Um, I can go to a wireless Apple CarPlay fairly easily. There might be a bit of length because I'm filming on my phone at the same time. But as you can see, nice big screen. It's full screen, which is good as well. It's lovely to see that. Um, down below that then, we've then got the controls there for all the air conditioning systems. I actually do like having buttons for air conditioning. Um, I know a lot of cars these days are going towards everything being digital, etc. Um, but I think these are the controls you're going to use probably most often. So it's nice that you've still got sort of dials and buttons and bits and pieces like that. Um, so yeah, kudos to Toyota for, uh, for sticking with normal buttons. Uh, just below that, we've then got the single USB. Um, as I said a minute ago, to charge your phone with. I think down here, this is a little sort of storage cubby, but I reckon that would be a perfect place to put a wireless phone charger. A um, bit of a missed opportunity there, I reckon. Um, we've got buttons down here for switching between EV mode, obviously for this being a hybrid model. Uh, that turns off your traction and stability control, 
uh, and then you've got your drive modes for the engine there. Uh, gear stick is pretty sort of plain and simple. Uh, you've got your normal sort of drive modes there. The B mode is where you can um, put maximum regenerative braking. So when you're actually driving along, you can pretty much use one pedal um, for braking and accelerating, uh, except when you get sort of uh, sort of slow speeds, then you have to use a brake pedal itself. And then we've got the electronic handbrake and the automatic hold for the handbrake. Uh, as you can see, we've got a couple of cup holders here. Fits a decent sized bottle in there pretty easily, which is quite good. Uh, and then just behind that, we've got the armrest with a little bit of storage, which has also got another 12 volt power socket in there as well. So, what do I think of the interior then? Generally, I do like it. I think it's a, a nice place to be. Uh, Everything is laid out nice and easily. Uh, all the buttons are nice and easy to use. When you come around though, you do find yeah, some of the build quality is pretty good, but there's some of it. So when you get up here, it starts becoming sort of very cheap plastic. Um, but I guess it's the bits and pieces you don't really touch anyway. Um, so maybe I'm being a little bit too fussy there. So sitting in the front seat then, what's it like? Well, as I said earlier, the seats are really, really supportive and comfortable. The leather steering wheel is really nice to hold. The view out the front is really good as well. And you've got decent sized windows and also decent sized side mirrors. The side mirrors have also got blind spot monitor as well, which is quite handy if you're on the freeway or driving along and there's some uh, cars in your blind spot. But yeah, the general overall driving position is really, really comfortable. It's a great view out the road. Uh, you've got a fantastic infotainment display there in front of you. So it's a really nice place to be here in the front. Now let's have a look in the back and see how much space the rear passengers get. <laughs> And as you can see there, getting the back of the Corolla Cross was actually quite easy. The rear door opens nice and wide, and there's ample leg room here to actually stretch your legs out. So yeah, the getting in and out process and actually sitting in is quite easy. Plenty of leg room, and you can actually get your feet underneath the driver's seat, which is a massive plus. Particularly if you're going on a long journey, just allows you to stretch your legs out a little bit more and be a bit more comfortable. In the centre, we've got a couple of rear air vents, which is handy, so the air conditioning comes through to the back. And just down there at the bottom, we've actually got two USB-C fast charging points. So if you've got kids in the back who want to charge devices, they're well catered for. Now, if you're going to put a baby seat in the back of the Corolla Cross, you'll be pleased to know that the outer two seats have got the isofix mounting points. Unfortunately, though, we don't get any sort of armrest here in the middle, which is a bit of a shame, because that normally has the armrest plus a couple of cup holders. You do get a cup holder here in the door handle though, so that does make up for that sort of shortcoming if you like, uh, plus a little bit of storage down here as well. Um, but overall in the back is pretty decent. Now in terms of headroom, as you can see, I've got absolutely acres. Even if you're about six foot, I still reckon you'd be pretty comfortable in here. Um, so yeah, rear passenger space is really, really good. Now, I mentioned in the front of the car a minute ago that some of the plastics weren't quite as nice uh, as some of the others. Uh, and that definitely is uh, magnified back here. The plastic here on the top of the doors, yeah, feels a little bit cheaper. But this bit here in the middle feels very cheap. Um, yeah, it's not what, what you'd really expect from Toyota. It's almost like they've built it down to a price as a, you know, they had a budget to stick to. Um, so they've cut corners in some areas. So, um, a little bit disappointing to find some of the plastics are sort of fairly cheap feeling. So let's now take this out for a drive and see what this new Corolla Cross Hybrid is like out on the open road. As with all hybrid cars, the Corolla Cross actually starts off in electric um, and then the petrol engine actually kicks in pretty seamlessly, I have to say. Um, obviously as when it needs to. No, it's not the sort of car that you can go sort of thrashing and try and go as quickly as possible. It's not really designed for that sort of thing. And if you do, it's quite unpleasant. It gets really noisy and uh, you don't really seem to be going much quicker than you were before. So the best way to drive this is actually with a fairly gentle throttle. And you make actually sort of fairly good progress without too much noise and intrusion into the cabin. The ride itself is very comfortable, uh, particularly on these 17 inch wheels that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the steering is fairly light, 
so it's not a difficult car to drive in the slightest. We please know brakes are good. Just had to do a fairly short stop to a set of traffic lights. And um, yeah, it pulled up really, really well. Uh, I was quite impressed actually. And as well as having this fantastic new infotainment system, Toyota have also brought out an app you can get for your mobile phone where you can do things like remote start your engine, lock and unlock your doors. Um, so again, it's catching up with all the other manufacturers. Uh, so it's very similar to the Ford Pass that I've got on my Focus and um, you know other manufacturers like BMW and Mercedes have on their cars as well. Um, so it's a fairly early thing. It's only available on certain models and certain functions are only available on certain models as well. Um, so if you've got some of the newer stuff, like this brand new Corolla Cross, you get kind of everything. The only downside to it though, is you only get like a one year subscription to it. You have to pay for it if you want it after that, which I think is a bit of a con. Because if you look at the Ford Pass system that I've got on my Focus, I don't have to pay for that. That's completely free. Um, so it's a bit cheeky, I think, that Toyota won't charge you for doing things like remote start of your engine and, and bits and pieces like that. Some of the stuff is free. It's not all, it's not all paid for. But it's the stuff you really want that you have to pay for. Um, so yeah, I think that's a bit, um, a bit cheeky from Toyota. In terms of which model to choose, I think you'd definitely go hybrid. Uh, 100% just because, you know, Toyota do hybrid so well and the fuel economy is fantastic. It's then whether you want, I'd say, a GXL or the Atmos and whether you want two or four wheel drive. Personally speaking, I'd go for the Atmos just because I like things like the sunroof and the nicer looking animal wheels. But I think I'd go two wheel drive because it's really not the sort of car that you're going to be taking off road. Um, and the four wheel drive system is literally just another electric motor on the rear axle. So I think that would be the one for me. That would get me into sort of just over fifty thousand dollars as a driveway price, which isn't terrible these days, um, and particularly when you get in that famous Toyota hybrid system. So for me, that's the one I would go for, um, just because, like I say, I like a few more gadgets and the nicer alloys. Um, yeah, two-wheel drive hybrid Atmos, that'd be me, I reckon. You also have to wonder whether this is going to take sales from things like the Rav Four. Maybe, maybe not. The lead times for buying a Rev4 are horrendous at the moment. I've heard of three and four years from some diggers, uh, where this is a little bit quicker. Not fantastically quicker, but maybe 18 months to two years for one of these as a hybrid. So yeah, whether it would take sales, I really don't know. I think it's aimed at a slightly different market. With the Rav4 being slightly bigger, it's probably more family orientated, where this might be for people that don't necessarily have young kids. Um, or don't have people in the back that often um, but on the occasion you know do want people in the back or do want a little bit of boot space um, so yeah I think it will fit in perfectly then try to range um, they'll definitely sell plenty of them um, and that's about what I can say about it really good car have the hybrid for sure 100% um, just be prepared to wait for one if you uh, if you've got one in order or if you're thinking of ordering one Probably the sweet spot in the range though is this, the GXL two-wheel drive hybrid. It gives you enough equipment. It's got the hybrid system. I don't think you need the four-wheel drive personally. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the sweet spot in the range, the GXL two-wheel drive hybrid. But I would buy the Atmos two-wheel drive hybrid. There you go. There's my considered opinion. As you'd expect, it's full of safety equipment as well. Uh, autonomous braking, lane keeping, adaptive cruise, blind spot monitor, um, junction assist, and all that type of stuff. So yeah, it's it's fully catered for with all the uh, all the latest safety stuff. Uh, at the time I'm making this video, I don't believe it's had the end cap testing, but you would imagine it'd get five stars just because it's got all the requirements these days that um, the end cap tell you you need to get five stars basically. Now, as with all new Toyotas, you actually get a five-year unlimited mileage warranty with this car. Servicing's actually been increased. It's now 12 months or 15,000 Ks. Uh, and as usual, Toyota do cap price servicing for the first four years as well. Um, so yeah, a fantastic sort of ownership proposition. Um, gone are the days when you have to take your Corolla hatchback in every six months or 10,000 Ks. Um, which for a lot of people, you might not do the Ks, but you'll... Uh, you were visiting your dealership every six months, which um, 
For me personally, that would get a bit annoying, I think. So there you go then, that's my thoughts and opinions and review on the 2023 Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comment section below for me and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Don't forget to give the video a like, also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out when the next video goes live. So that just leaves me to say thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Let's go check the